Hi, everyone. How are you all doing today? I'm, I'm Anjali. I'm a TLM on the PyTorch distributed team. Today, we, I'm going to be talking about some of the APIs we're building for scaling workloads. Can we go back a slide, please? Oh, um, I think they're a bit out of order, so I'm just going to have to wing this. Okay. The mission of PyTorch distributed team is the following. We want to build easy, efficient, fast, and reliable large-scale training APIs for PyTorch users. Our mission is rooted in three core values. We want them to be usable, we want them to be modular, and finally, performance. We want APIs to be intuitive to users. We want them to be able to seamlessly scale from a single GPU to multiple GPUs. We want them to be modular, such that you, know, you can build 2D and 3D parallelism solutions. We also want them to work well with other PyTorch features. And finally, we want this enabled stack to give the best performance at scale. We can think of PyTorch distributed APIs in the following format. We have high-level end-to-end APIs that provide data parallelism like FSDP and DDP. Uh, APIs that provide pipeline parallelism like PIPI and tensor parallelism APIs. These core APIs and ML workflows in general are powered by the core, um, these end to end APIs are powered by core APIs like distributed tensor, distributed checkpointing, activation checkpointing, and collective APIs like C10D. Moving from Eager to PyTorch 2, we've enhanced our existing APIs, added new ones and also added Dynamo support for DDP. Let's take a look at DDP and FSDP, which is how we've implemented data parallelism. Most folks might be familiar with DDP, where we replicate parameters on different devices. We enable um, gradient synchronization using all reduce so that params are in sync. FSDP also implements data parallelism. But here, you shard parameters on different devices, and you use all gather before you have the forward pass of the enabled module. Post the prototype and beta release of FSDP, we've been working on enabling new features and working on enhancing existing ones. For example, we worked on better interoperability with activation checkpointing. Now it depends on the safe tensor hooks, which means that we were able to solve a lot of edge cases. Next, we've also enhanced mixed precision offering so that it works better with bflow 16, which means you can run a larger model but have better performance guarantees. And finally, for tackling OOM issues in the forward prefetching arena, we've enabled a rate limiter. An example on the right, we can see a DDP module um, being wrapped and an FSD, FSDP module also wrapping a module. So these are both module wrappers, essentially. Like mentioned in the keynote by Sumit, we've also enabled Dynamo support for DDP. Using a single line of code, torchcom.compile, we can now optimize this DDP example with Dynamo. Dynamo optimizes DDP by breaking the graph at the collective boundary. This means it's the size of the subgraph and basically the number of parameters or size of the parameters in the subgraph is equal to the gradient reduction bucket size. This is needed for computation and communication overlap. Without this, you'd be compiling into a single kernel, smaller number of graphs, and you would essentially be calling collectives after the backward pass has been completed. To enable pipeline parallelism, we've implemented a prototype API called PIPI. PIPI API enables uh, your model to be converted into a graph, sharded using user annotated split points, and enables mi uh, micro-batching and you know, specialized scheduling of forward and backward passes that's needed for pipeline parallelism. Uh, we've been working on enabling or improving PIPI such that you know, now we provide deferred initialization so that you can just initialize the specific stage on the GPU. With, you know, so you have larger models that can now use PIPI. And we've also been working on enabling better automated split APIs so users can specify the number of stages they want or the size of the stage, um, and we can automatically shard your model. PIPI is a cross-host pipeline parallelism solution, and it also supports complex architectures like skip connections and shared params. So looking at an example on the right, we have a pipe object uh, that we instantiate from a split module, and essentially it's the pipeline driver, driver that orchestrates, that we have instantiated that orchestrates the forward and backward passes, um, and also, um, you know, how we do the micro-batching and et cetera.
We've also implemented tensor parallelism using core D tensor constructs. Tensor parallelism is useful when you have computation that is inherently parallel that you can then shard across devices. It's also useful when you want to defer maybe synchronization. Tensor parallelism API that we have, which is a parallelized module called on a model, and we specify a parallel plan which specifies how you want to shard the weights in your model. Let's take a look, take an example, look at an example on the right. We have an NN linear module, and we call parallelized module on it with a column wise parallel plan. This means you're sharding the weights of your module in the dimension one. The inputs and outputs to this layer is actually massaged based on the parallel plan. So they can be sharded or replicated as specified. Let's take a look at example two below. Here you actually have an entire transformer model that you call, can call parallelized module width. And here we specify a pairwise parallel plan. So you run column-wise sharding followed by a row-wise sharding. So parallelized module is actually uh, built on top of D-tensor. And D-tensor is how we specify how tensor, you know, annotate how tensors should be sharded or replicated. We also provide uh, support for 2D parallelism using parallelized module. So the example on the right, it's the same example as before where we're calling parallelized module on a transformer model, but then we wrap it with FSTP after. So this is an example of 2D parallelism. Tensor parallelism API, like parallelized module, is actually replacing the parameters in place with D-tensors that have been annotated to specify if a tensor is replicated or sharded. Here are a couple of resources uh, to take back with you, um, links to PyTorch distributed tutorials and FSDP. We also have examples for tensor parallelism and PIPI, followed by a post describing how we enable Dynamo for DDP. Thank you. Um, handing off to Dennis, who's going to talk about TorchRec. Yeah.